You just tuned in to the Best Damn Fitness Podcast on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. Hey, check this out. You guys ready to get crazy here? Okay, 24 hours. As soon as we post this podcast, if you comment in the first 24 hours and we pick your comment, you're going to win something cool. Normally, we give away t-shirts. Not this time. This time, we're going to give you a box of Organifi Pure. This is Lion's Mane and Baobab infused. This is a nootropic. No stimulants. It feels really good. If you're wondering why we sound so smart and sharp on the podcast, it's because of this stuff right here. Individual packets, by the way. Throw it in some water. Drink it. See how you feel. You'll win this entire box if we pick your comment in the first 24 hours. By the way, here's a secret. You can leave as many comments as you want. So you can game the system if you want. It's pretty cool. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notifications because we give away stuff all the time. So next time this happens, you'll be the first one to get in there. Um, and uh, you know, don't forget to enjoy this podcast. Also, one more thing before we get started. We are running a workout program promotion this month called the Phase 2 Bundle. It includes MAPS Performance, which is a functional athletic-minded training program. It's about three months long. We are combining that with MAPS Aesthetic, which is our bodybuilding training program. So it's like a beautiful marriage between two workout programs that give you this beautiful baby with functional aesthetic movement. It's like if Adam and Justin uh, had sex again and had a baby. Okay? This is a true story. You got to stop uh, and, using me in that. My bad. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, go check it out. It's on sale. It's $79.99. Normally, if you buy both, it'll cost you almost 300 bucks. Go to mapsfebruary.com um, and check it out. Again, that's mapsfebruary.com. Did you guys have a good weekend? Yeah, it was good. Really? Yeah. Well, it was like, uh, what, Valentine's Day weekend? Whatever. Yeah, what'd you yeah. do, dude? Uh, well, we did it like Saturday night, so we I, we went out to dinner. It was funny because we're outside, and it, it felt like, you know, pre-pandemics. Like, everybody was out at the same time, like, all kind of crowded around these, like, fire pits. And it was, uh, everybody, like, they were, like, over 60 or so. Uh, acting like a bunch of kids, dude. I was just like, this is crazy. Like what? Getting smashed and acting crazy? Yeah, well, like, I could tell, like, a, a bunch of them were out on, like, dates. And so they're all trying to be, like, these guys, like, got drug into these three, these three girls obviously knew each other. Like, they were, like, all friends and talking the whole time. And the guys were just sitting there just like, didn't, <laughs> didn't say anything. And this one girl gets up, the lady I should call her because she's probably, you know, like 65 or something, mm -hmm. and walks over to another group of guys over here just talk, all getting all smashed and talking and starts flirting with them. And I'm like, wait a minute, isn't that this guy's date? And then it was like all this drama and me and Courtney were sitting there eating and wow. it was just like hilarious, maybe dude. That, maybe that's part of the role play or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, they're probably all swingers yeah, or something. Later, later on they go home. He's like, I saw you. How hard was it to get reservations? <sighs> Well, actually, it was because we went to a, another place in Aptos first, and mm -hmm. it was just like packed. And we're I, like, "Nah, this is the rebound. We're not effect. gonna do it. This is the rebound effect. Uh, I, if I if I go out anywhere because restaurants are starting to open up a little bit here, mm -hmm. they're just I've never seen them like that. Crazy. Yeah. And I feel like it's everybody's like the just, only thing to do. Yeah, you know, it's like if, there's no movie theaters. We actually like went to the movie theater and tried to support. Them. We, we they're doing um, their popcorn and concessions and stuff. And so we we bought some of that for the kids, and then we watched like a movie one of the nights. But you know, it's like it sucks, man, because that used to be like a fun thing to do every now and then. You mm. could like at least go see something. Yeah, Je Jessica forgot it was Valentine's Day, which means I got to surprise her. I never surprise her because I'm so terrible at surprises. Oh, what'd you do? Just had yeah flowers and chocolate delivered, but mm. she was so happy about it, and I was so proud that I didn't spill the beans because <laughs> you guys know me, you didn't right? Forget yeah. very hard. Like if I get someone a gift, someone's something like a, as a gift. I it kills me. I have to tell them right now. Well, especially if it's like a yeah. cool surprise, right? Mm. Flowers and chocolate's kind of consistent for that, right? Uh, it's not like a big surprise. Oh, it doesn't matter. I got yeah. to do a surprise. Surprise! It's obvious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just thought oh, of this. And then here's a bear. This yeah. is my first time. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, shut up, man. Wow. No. I did a good job. Right, I, man. I thought I did. That's what I always do. Uh, too. Better than me. I mean, better than me. Did you do sure. anything for Valentine's Day? No, no. Or? We didn't do anything for sure. Uh, but we're in the middle of moving, right? So the, the whole, I mean, our house is just a disaster right now and boxes everywhere. And yesterday was, moving. was yeah, so do I. Yesterday I was clearing out underneath the house and I'm pulling out all these boxes. And, you know, so I, I told, here's the deal. So Katrina, I've told this before, right? So, you know, expensive gifts is my love language. I like to buy that stuff. She hates that shit, even though she pretends to like it every time I give it to her. 
the stuff that she loves, that she saves, that she holds on to is a card if I write in. So I wrote what will go in a card, but I told her, listen, wait till we get in the new place in a week and I'll do Valentine's Day. Oh, so you, already, you, you wrote it out. Yes. But it's not in a card. Right, right. Just to back myself up in case she was like, what the fuck? It's yeah. Valentine's Day and I got nothing. And I said, it's just so you know, honey, I already wrote your card. Yeah. I just didn't do anything for so you today. Happy Valentine's Day. You just got to find like a diamond, <laughs> yeah. diamond yeah. encrusted card, you know, and then it like fits both of you guys. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> no. Thought about this for like two days. Uh, yeah. No, <laughs> yesterday we were going through like, her and I were going through like boxes of stuff. So we would, so this is now our second move together since we've been together. And last time I had convinced her to like get rid of almost everything, right? But there's still boxes that we kept. And, and that we package stuff up of, you know, and uh, understandably, right? Like old memories and things like that. Like I, you know, I don't expect her or me to throw stuff away. It goes all the way back to when we were kids. And uh, so I was like, let's try and purge some things before we move again. Just I know we did it last time, just a few years ago, but let's do it again. And we pull these boxes out and we're going through stuff and just uh, going down memory lane was like hilarious. One of the things that <laughs> her and I were cracking up about is I've got these picture frames or we her and I both have this we have boxes like t that take up three four boxes of all these big and uh, weird sized frames that you've we've had since we were like teenagers and stuff and uh we agreed like why are we keeping these frames you could go rebuy another frame for like seven dollars we're never none of us are gonna put a high school frame picture of our high school girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever <laughs> like up in our house so why keep the frame if you want to keep the picture pull it out of the frame yeah. and then just file it away and then so we're like throwing stuff away so i get to i get to one of my frames and i got like one of these frames that should be allowed a shrine don't you think <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. Like all your old girlfriends uh, well, I'm, I'm okay with it she's so is she so that's what's kind of cool about our this our is road. the road that led me to you honey. yeah yeah it's exactly we, we we both, all the mistakes i made yeah we both have a we both have Stepping a stones. Uh, a, 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 a relationship where we actually i mean i love to go through her old boyfriend stuff she likes to do the same thing we think it's funny whatever so anyways i'm going through this i had this frame and it's got uh it's got nine or 12 pictures and it, it, it like folds out and it stands this big ass thing right and I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna pull the, I'm pulling the pictures out, and I'm cracking up because, uh, you know, I've had this probably since high school. So there's, you know, been several girlfriends since high school, of course. And so my lazy ass as a kid, as, as when I would date somebody new, I wouldn't even uh, take it out of the frame. I would just put the new picture in. <laughs> <laughs> In the frame. So, oh. so, so yeah, it's like, like those Russian dolls. Yeah, yeah, so they're, they're like stacked on top of each other. I thought, oh my God, what it's that's Make it like a flip book. Yes, yeah, like, so we're going through. I was dying laughing. Katrina was yeah. pulling out some old photos of boyfriends that she dated that were sending her like half nude model photos and stuff. We were cracking up. Oh, it was wow. oh yeah. It was I think we got a little bit of work done. It ended up being like memory lane for half the time we were oh, out there. Oh man, that's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. I like to pick <laughs> you sent funny. us some pictures of yourself when you were a kid that yeah. you must have found or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was going through there and found some some high school yeah. stuff. You look more ethnic as a kid. So, you know, that's I think that's what's funny about the uh, you know because I get lumped into the the white privilege category as an adult, <laughs> which I think is so fun. <laughs> I think it's so funny because I have like when I was a kid, I was teased for being like when we moved to Colorado, I was bullied. I was bullied in eighth grade, uh, and they and they called me every every name under the sun because I looked ethnic. Mm -hmm. And I but then well, that's when, half your. I mean, your mom is yeah. Is my Mexican, mom right? yeah. My my grandma's full. My mom's half. Mm -hmm. But they all they all married white men, so I have that whitewash to me. Mm -hmm. And when I if I was somewhere where there was more Hispanic brown people, then I don't, I didn't fit in with them. If I was somewhere where there was all mostly white people, I didn't fit in with them. So I've always been, no matter where I was, an, an outcast. But mm -hmm. I always find it funny when people that have just found me because of Mind Pump today, they look at me and assume that I'm like this white privileged kid. I'm just like, dude, it's so funny. I don't identify with that whatsoever. Yeah. If anything, I was teased more for being the other one. Yeah, good looking kid yeah. though. Yeah, my, my mom uh, sent a bunch of old videos. Uh, actually, this morning she was watching some old VHS videos or whatever when we were kids. Man, we used to have family parties. Like, we still have these big family parties, but the family got so big when I was younger that we had to kind of split up. And and I remember that. I remember these fam as a kid. These family parties where, like for Christmas, there would be a room dedicated to presents. That's how many gifts were in there. It was literally a room, and you'd oh, like if the door was open, they would kind of fall out. And I remember that as a kid, but it, you know it's hard to remember fully. Anyway, I'm watching some of these videos, and literally, you know, my dad he was he bought like a VHS back in the day, so he's like thought it was a big shot, right? So he's filming all these family you know get-togethers, and we were like sardines, dude. We were in the kitchen, and there's just like people just 
like a like, like a nightclub. I'm like, oh my god, that's how we used to hang out. That's a lot of people. It would be like it would be like a Sunday dinner, and there'd be 70 people in like a three bedroom house. Dang, you know what I mean? If yeah. it was a holiday, it would easily hit 100. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. problem. And then we all kind of do. But I'm watching these. I'm like, oh my gosh. And then the kids were just. I'm like, how did they? And it makes me feel because sometimes I'll go to family function and there'll be like four kids. Yeah. And you know, by the time eight o'clock rolls around, I'm looking at Jessica like, let's get out of here. I'm getting. I can't handle this anymore. I'm a wimp. These, we, there were like 15 to 20 kids running around throwing shit or whatever, and everybody was chill. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I can't different, handle that. Different time. Totally oh, different yeah. time, man. You know, yeah. I had, I sent it, I posted it, I think I sent this on the, or put it on my story too, is there's pictures of me. And, uh, you know, uh, Justin, did you see the ramp that I had, we had built when we were kids? Yeah, yeah. So I got to be, uh, you know, there's no, I got no helmet, no nothing no, on dude, right? no, we're out, we we're didn't do helmets yeah, back then. We're right, and we're not dirt. We're all out the, the, all we're the, the we- asphalt in the middle of the street, yeah. jumping on this thing. And I'm like, okay, I'm doing the math on the age on there. So we moved from that house when I was nine. So I got to be between seven and nine years You're old. You're a little kid. <laughs> Hitting that in the middle of the street, yeah, dude, dude. This is why I tell you, this is why our generation, the, the, all the weak kids are dead. So that's why also left over. So is the we have, oh, yeah. I didn't post this, but there's photos in that the next page of my that album. So we, I mean, I must have took forty photos of us jumping as a kid, right? They're terrible with like blurry with a camera, one of those old cameras with the flashes on top. There's we took photos of the bottom of our bike tire because we thought it would be clever. One of us laid underneath the ramp while the other yeah. dude jumped yeah. over. Super a safe. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Can you just picture these kids? Yeah. Middle of a street, main street, big ass ramp. I'm like seven to nine years old, somewhere between there, laying underneath each other, jumping. Over. Oh, dude, we used to take <laughs> those like longboard, like skateboards, yeah. and we would do downhill boarding, you know, on asphalt. Oh, yeah. And, and sometimes we do that with like flip flops on. And, like, I just remember just like skinning my, like, my everything. feet, my knees, everything just yeah. bloody raw. You, come home, be like, ah. Oh. Now, think about that. Like, if you really think back, Back, was there ever a moment you would come home after being outside all day where you didn't skin something? There was no, something always. My mom, my mom kept peroxide on the on like the outs, yeah. out. We didn't even put it in the cupboard. It was just oh. like out. Yeah. I was trying to explain that to my kids. Like this weekend, uh, I was at my parents and like ever like he he had just like skinned something like and he's like yeah. I'm like let's, <laughs> let's put some bactine on it. You know, like you got some bactine in here and he's like what's bactine? I'm like you don't know what bactine is. <laughs> oh, just wait. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> was stuck you could, oh my god he was like ah you could feel it clean everything oh, yeah. oh it was i remember it almost being competitive that my but like who could get it to bubble up the most yeah. like who had the bigger the bigger uh, the bigger like, burn it's real dirty in there yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what my dad used to make me do uh, when i would go help him when i go work with him whatever and i get blisters and shit in my hands or whatever i fall down because we're working on construction and i'm like nine years old mm-hmm. he'd, be like, he'd be like here put some put some cement on it so i like rub my hands together with cement. He goes, it'll it'll harden up and stop yeah, the bleeding. Yeah, it'll this stop might, it. I know. I'm like, I'm surprised that I didn't get. Maybe I will later. Maybe I'll get some kind of cancer. So or something. working with my dad when we oh, were in construction, if you like split your finger open or cut it on Duct something, tape. No, glue. Oh yeah, yeah, glue. Oh, yeah. yeah fantastic. Yeah, Super glue. Yeah, yeah. Actually, <laughs> actually, actually, they did in the war. They yeah. do that now. You yeah, know, in the yeah. hospital. That was <laughs> actually pretty smart. Yeah. Just don't put gorilla glue. I, in I your saw hair. another one too. I guess like even further back. I don't know if it's medieval times or what it was, but they actually used to use spider webs as as bandages. Yeah. How I, fucking creepy is that? I heard that? you say that. Ew. Yeah, spider webs are... You know, you ever read the properties of spider webs? Oh, well, it doesn't make sense how strong they the are. The tensile strength for how how you know light and small or whatever it is, is like, it's on another level. Yeah. Really? It's, oh, dude. I did not know that. Oh, it's stronger in, on a weight, you know, per, a weight by weight basis or whatever. Yeah. It's stronger than steel. Mm. What? Yeah, you didn't know that? I did not know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, spider webs are, are inc- the tensile strength, the strength that they have for how small they are. Yeah. Right, right. Well, they, they've been trying to engineer it forever, you know, for bulletproofing and all this kind of stuff. But uh, that that's what led to the uh, the goat that, that actually threw its milk. Would you like they, they, they oh, uh, genetically this. engineered it so it like basically would have spider webs coming out of its, its teeth. Oh, look at this. See, it tells you right there how, how strong it is compared to, to steel. So, isn't that crazy? That is wild. Yeah, it's really, really crazy. That, what's, but that, what you're saying, Justin, I remember reading that. What, what yeah. is wrong with scientists? I, that, again, this was years ago. This yeah. What did you like say? A, over what? a decade ago. They genetically engineered uh, a goat. Spider goat. Is a, what to they, create we'll look that up, Doug. Spider spider goat. To create spider webs in its milk. Yeah. 
You know what? I, why? why? It's, it's disgusting. <laughs> exactly. Which, yeah, exactly. <laughs> really? Just because maybe we can? Well, because, I mean, they could just produce it, mass produce it. Because, uh, I mean, think about like harvesting like webs from spiders. Like, yeah. That's going to take a lot of spiders. You know what I feel like, though, sometimes? Here's what I think. I think sometimes. So the get, theory is that the goat would milk out spider They created web. milk and there were strings of, of spider yeah, webs. just it. pull. This, it's disgusting. Yeah. I don't know who thought of well, this. Well, I was just going to say, I wonder, this is what I think. I think that, you know, they're really, really smart. So you have these super smart scientists and they're yeah. like, he's like, hey, dude, like, like, let's imagine we're all like super smart scientists. Like, hey, you guys want to come over tomorrow night and uh, and get real high? Yes, because they smoke some weed. So then we come on, we get blazed and we're yeah. like, hey, you want to, let's think of, what can we do? Let's do something crazy. Like, I want to make like, a frog dude. that can fly. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, we could totally do that. Let's make a frog with wind, you know? Yeah. So they come up with a crazy idea like this. And then they, then afterwards they come up with the reason, like, oh, this is so that uh, we uh, we can make spider webs mass produce. That's yeah, why. It's that's for you know, the military. Yeah, or but something. what if they fucked up though? What if the goat ended up like you know, walking on the walls and or got two extra legs? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> it had like venom. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. The goats like biting people. What have we done? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Anyway, crazy that's stuff. That's a messed up petting yeah. zoo, dude. I had a, a great conversation with Jessica this weekend that I wanted to share with you guys. So you know what? One thing I love about her is very few people can get me to think as deeply as she can. And we were talking about just working out and fitness. And she was at, she asked the question, she goes, why is it when, cause she's gone through different phases in her fitness history. Before I met her, she went through a period where she was uh, just a cardio machine. She would run miles every day. And, and because that's what she thought was the way to, to, for fitness or whatever. Of course, when I met her, she got really into resistance training, all that stuff. She says, why was it when I used to do lots of running and cardio when I would stop, I would gain weight faster than when I lift weights and I stop. Like, what's the reasoning behind that? Why is it that stopping the cardio makes me gain body fat more, whereas stopping weights, I don't gain. It, I don't. I don't notice that kind of a rebound. Well, the the process of atrophy is longer. The minute you stop doing cardio, you the benefits of it end right then and there. The benefits of you building muscle is a faster metabolism. It takes a yeah. while for that to fall off. Hundred percent. So yeah. you got you get a lot more leeway time. Hundred percent. So uh, you know, I was thinking how to how to explain this, but when you're doing lots of cardio, especially as a fat loss uh, strategy, the benefit of the cardio is it just burns a lot of calories. Yeah, manually. while you're yeah while you're doing yeah. It. So you're running for you know an hour. Um, you're burning let's say five or six hundred calories. Um, and the adapt, here's the other thing. People don't think about how exercise causes your body to adapt and change cardio. You do lots of it and your body just gets better at endurance. There really isn't a metabolism boost from that. If anything, over time, it can actually teach your body to burn less and less calories as you become more efficient. But even if we negate that, right, you're, you're burning calories through running. When you stop, the benefit's gone, the benefit's gone. And you've now decreased your caloric burn by five or 600 calories a day. Right. When you're lifting weights, you know, an hour of weight training, you're going to burn maybe 160 calories, maybe 200 if you're going real intense at most, right? So way less than cardio. But the adaptation from resistance training speeds up the metabolism, both through the muscle building effect and also because it teaches the body to become less efficient with calories. So when you stop lifting weights, you're now burning 160 less calories a day. Not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. But the metabolism stays fast for a while. Now, it will slow down as you lose muscle, but that process takes longer. So cardio is one of those things where, as, as a strategy for weight loss, number one, it doesn't cause the, the preferable adaptations of metabolism boosting. And also, you stop it, you gain back very quick. Not so with resistance training. There's another factor, too. Uh, it, okay, so have you ever seen somebody who is really lean from doing cardio versus someone who's muscular lean from weight training, and both those people add 10 pounds of fat onto their body? Who looks way better? Of course. The person who built all that muscle, because you've shaped the body by building muscle. And so sometimes even when you put on a little bit of body fat on a body that's been, that muscle has been built on, it actually mm -hmm. looks better. That's right. Mm -hmm. It looks more shapely. So the, both people could have gone up the same which, as far as adding 10 pounds of fat to their body. But the body that was lean from just cardio versus the body that was lean from building muscle and from being lean from lifting weights. That person, if they both put ten pounds on, looks dramatically totally. different just because of the uh, the muscle. Totally. They have. And people mm -hmm. forget that your f it's body fat percentage. It's not total body fat. In other words, it's a percentage of your overall body weight. Right, twenty pounds of fat on a two hundred pound man is ten percent body fat. You are lean. Yeah. Twenty pounds of body fat on a one hundred pound man is twenty percent body fat. You are obese. Right. Very big difference. The difference being. 
the it's a percentage, right? It's a smaller percentage of more weight, and that's what muscle does. And then here's the other thing. Building muscle, because it, what it does for women is it shapes the body. It gives them more curve. It's funny because you'll hear women say that, like, I want nice curves. <laughs> what they don't realize that they're saying is, I want to build more muscle. Yeah. They don't think that's what it is. They just say, I want more curve. But in reality, it's I, I need to build more muscle. So I thought that was interesting. So we had a good conversation on that. It's just another reason why the probably the best strategy, uh, well, definitely the best strategy just for fat loss in general is to prioritize resistance training. Yeah, it's just one another one of those uncommon, uh, you know, conversations. Like you're not going to hear that a lot from everything else that we're getting marketed to. So you know, I think that just needs to uh, be reiterated constantly. It, all of the friends of Courtney, it, it's like one of those constant things I'm trying to like explain. So that's just another good way, good example to kind of bring up uh, with that. Probably. I read an I read an article this this weekend that I wanted to share with you guys so we could speculate together. So it was I forget what it was titled, but it was. In 2030, um, no one would own anything anymore. Yeah, I've seen so I've seen stuff like this. Yeah, and I think we've kind of talked a little bit about like you know the car theory and stuff mm. like that. But it went even further. The stuff that I wouldn't even think about, for example, like your you know utensils in your house, your air fryer, your toaster, your all these things. Instead of even keeping it and storing it in a house, when you want it, it'll get to you. So when you decide you're going to use your air fryer on Tuesday night, it would be something as simple as mm -hmm. putting it in your app that tomorrow might, or even that morning tonight, I'm making dinner with this. So it's like the Jetsons. <clears throat> everything would be for rent. Everything mm -hmm. you would, it would be, everything would be a lease and then you would, it would be so, and because if we solve the transportation thing, like the cost to, to get from point A to point B, unlike how we do it right now, mm -hmm. I think they've already done this too. Like it would be uh, way cheaper for no one to own cars and for us just to all share I was just going to say, to understand mm. this, we would have to talk about something that's easier to understand because like, it's, it's hard to conceptualize right. renting my utensils. I use them every day, all day long. Right. But if you think about cars, right, it, the cost, it, it, how much money it costs you to maintain a car, both through insurance, registration, Cost upkeep, the tires, whatever. Uh, the, the the maybe if you pay payments on a car, let's say you finance your car, uh, versus paying each time you want a a car to pick you up and drive you somewhere. And they've actually shown this. They've done the math with today's numbers and shown that it would cost something like a thousand dollars a year to just drive around, have a car pick you up and drive you around, which is way less yeah. than would cost to own a car. And then of course storing your car in a garage. Uh, all that stuff. So it just, in my opinion, it makes too much sense. Nobody's going to own a car, or a lot of people. The people who own cars are the same people who own horses. Today. Well, and then the way they that, have a lot of money. Well, in this you think that'll actually translate to people that live like in the middle of nowhere? So no. So then that's what yeah. the article actually talks yeah, it's about. It's like metropolitan areas. C yeah, city people. He mm -hmm. goes, there. They'll still. Their theory is that there'll still be people that want that kind of country right. living and ownership and that's also their theory of like what we see like they see that in the future going up the price of like owning property land and stuff uh like in the country in a way continuing to rise because people will like to have that but everything within the city will be like leased and, you won't want to own I mean, anything that makes sense and now now of course if there's a too small of a market they're not going to really be a need to to uh you know to service it but let's say there's a town that's got it's small let's say it's a thousand people if a company could fully automate uh electric cars and let's just imagine they literally have a station near this town that has I don't know. There's a thousand. There's a thousand people living there. It's got 200 cars or 100 cars, and nobody needs to operate it. It's fully automated. So all someone has to do is go on their phone, hit the app, the car picks them up, drives them somewhere, and then drives back and charges itself. I can foresee at some point in the future that even small towns, people are not going to need to own cars because it would be very easy if it's fully automated. Right. If literally you hit it on the app, it takes itself off the charger, picks you up drops you off and then charges itself and that's the makes sense. and that's the theory with all these things so imagine mm. tonight you're what's your whatever dinner plans anybody has tonight like everything from the food that you need to make that recipe to the tools that you need to use it like right now we'd be like oh tonight i'm going to do brussels sprouts and i'm going to do a tri tip this and that boop 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 you put it all on your phone and then ai picks all that stuff up to sends a car <laughs> to a certain time to your house and it arrives all the things you need to make that and it'd be yeah. all bundled as one so price so i i can i don't know if hmm. i can see this with uh, stuff you use so often every day. I don't know how they would get through the trouble of like, because I'm not going to plan 
to yeah. you know to rent uh, something that I use all the time. No, you're sense. not going to do it with like I don't think forks and knives, right? Things like that. But it does make sense for like an air fryer, my Traeger. Okay, your Traeger cost you that makes sense fifteen hundred dollars for that. Right. If you were if you were able anytime you were thinking about using it, yeah, it was cost like you, a, cost you five bucks. A, yeah, a five dollar ten dollar fee plus it came with the meat that you were wanting to grill and the whatever tools you needed, everything to come the pellets, everything for a, such a reasonable price. That you go, man, I would have to use that you know, a hundred times in a year for it to make sense to own it. I'm mm -hmm. not going to use this thing a hundred times yeah. in a year. I'll just rent it. You know what else I could see this with? Clothes, hmm. especially- Yeah, clothes was another one yeah, they talked especially about. especially clothes yeah. that you wear. I think the first market that's going to get crushed with that is uh, are like nice clothes, like suits. going out to dinner. Yeah, Suits. I, I mean, I wouldn't own a suit if I had, so, if I had a tailored fitting to my size mm -hmm. suit that I could just rent- and brought to my house, I wouldn't own suits. Or nice shoes. So this is all like really heavily dependent on the delivery process. Yeah, totally. the car is going to change everything. Oh, dude, when they're automated drones, like that too. Well, like, yeah, oh, I get it. Have yeah, you guys? Drones, have you sure. seen? It's is it Michael Jordan? I got to look this up. Either Michael Jordan has a new golf course. I, I want to say it's Michael Jordan's new golf course. I'll look it up. Give me a second on whose it is. But I, I've seen this. So check this out. When you're out on the course playing, uh, and you want. Food, beer, cigar, whatever that, you order it on an app, drone brings it to where hold you are and oh, drops yeah. it to you. Oh, that's awesome. To the hole, whatever you're at. Yes. Oh, wow. So there you go. I mean, you're already, I mean, that. how smart is that? Because they're on a private place, so you don't have to worry about any drone bullshit or what you can and can't do. So that's already some, a business that's already utilizing the delivery with drones. I wonder if, we, hmm. now, I wonder if drones will, well, I guess not. I, I, I heard Elon talk about flying like taxis and stuff. He's like, too noisy. Yeah. It wouldn't make any sense to have. Well, the interesting though, like he, he was just on Rogan again. He was talking about like building and developing uh, an upgrade, like a SpaceX upgrade to the Tesla's at some point, so they could hover. Like, wow, they could hover like uh, up to like six feet in the air. Yeah, look this up, Doug. It's like, Michael what? Michael oh Jordan's new course cr course called Grove Grove Twenty. Looks Roman numerals twenty three. Grove twenty three. I wonder what Duh. like I, I wonder if I wonder if out. like thieves in the future. Will, like specialize in like taking down drones, delivering people course, shit. Dude, you know I mean? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a you know they hit like a or that'll be all the next like like heist movies we see. Yeah, like yeah, a, like, uh, a, like yeah. a targeted EMP. <laughs> you know? No, or a hat you Nets, just hack dude. it, take over the the flight plan. No man, I'm I'm getting eagles. Yeah, I'm telling you. Guys. I'm worried about. See, here's my yeah. And then we start talking about like what weird conspiracy shit. What if like somebody could just take over all these self driving cars? Yeah, you know what I mean, you're like driving, like when you oh take, sure hacks, yeah. hack, hack it over yeah. and Just, like drive it. Justin's getting too loud on mind pump. He's gonna get in an accident <laughs> tomorrow morning. You know what I mean? That's a, yeah. There it is. Wow, look at that. His airness, his airness is yeah. delivering drinks and snacks to players on the course via the air. Wow. You know, now because yeah, it's cool. because it's his course and it's private and these are drones. I'm sure a freaking hot dog is like seventy five dollars then if a drone <laughs> drops it off. I mean, they're already a drone dog. Um, oh yeah. I don't know, or maybe it was able to cut costs. Now you don't have to pay an employee who's uh, driving around on the cart, and you're you're probably increasing sales. One of the things when you're golfing, that's a pain in the ass, is you may go four holes and never see a cart come by. Uh, oh yeah. So you know, think about how much that would increase sales. That instantly, when you decide you want another cigar or you want another drink, yeah, he's got a whole fleet of them going running out there. Yes, with stuff. Yeah. Wow, yes. that is so isn't that cool. brilliant? That is very very cool. I know. Are are is are the are drug dealers in the black market using drones to get drugs? Do they places must now? be? I'm wondering. Is that uh, a thing? None, they, of, they use, none, of, none of my drug dealer friends are doing that. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> Bitcoin though. I mean, they all they all are using Bitcoin. I'll yeah. tell you that. That's big. That's I, remember we talked about this a long time ago, and that for sure was my theory was regardless if you believe it's going to be our future currency or not, the black market fully has adopted. Yeah, that. But I, I would think like drones in order to you know not be detected by radar, not be detected by all these like normal flight Aren't patterns too and small, things. Though, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, how can they keep tabs on these things so i would think that would be a perfect way it to is. smuggle stuff now justin because you're my my conspiracy theory friend yeah so let's let's I talk know. about bitcoin for a I, second i indulge the creation of bitcoin massive mystery there's a name of a guy they think that invented bitcoin nobody no, knows who he is i thought the theory is it's like 17 of some of the most brilliant yes. minds okay. got together yeah. whatever there's yeah. a lot of theories nobody knows for sure right. nobody knows its origins nobody knows what the fuck it's just all of a sudden there and now people are using it yeah what if Bitcoin was created by the CIA as a way to track the black market? 
as a way to see what's happening in the black. It's electronic, right. so they're watching what's happening, and then every once in a while they'll go in and pluck. So people. that is the theory. Okay, so the theory is that they're just going to sit back though and wait. Of while course, if you were the CIA, you wouldn't just hammer everybody all at once. Then you'd lose your most valuable. I tool. think it's New World Order, bro. Uh, <laughs> oh my bad. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't I mean, think so because it wasn't it like Silk Road was one of the first places that adopted it, right? Right. Yeah. And they got shut down. Yeah. But I'm wondering if they did this because, like, listen, we need to come up with a way to track the black market. And yeah. then every and when we want to, we'll 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 drop the hammer on certain players or whatever. Well, yeah, I mean that's not that crazy of a theory. I think too. Like, well, even the internet itself, right, started as uh, in the military. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they adopted it uh, worldwide. Dude, the CIA has done some shady, shady shit. Do you guys are you guys familiar with the uh, Iran Contra deal in the eighties with Reagan? Do you guys familiar with this? No. Oh, this is, it is real. This is legit. Like this is this is not a theory or whatever. It's actually happened. We were we were trying to by proxy, right? So this is during the Cold War, and there was you know anywhere communism was spreading, we were ready to to, to stop it. And I get that I get why you know we were afraid of the Soviet Union. There were nukes pointed at each other, or whatever. Yeah. So in South America, you had groups that were trying to to overthrow countries with you know like Marxist revolutions. So what we would do mm -hmm. is we would fund the opposing side, yeah. and we'd give them weapons or money. Right. Well, at this time, it was very unpopular. Uh, American public did not want it. And so getting political support for this was almost impossible. But remember, the CIA, uh, they, and, and a lot of people believe that they operate outside the government. They're like, we need to do what's best for the, the, the safety of the nation, right? Mm -hmm. So here's what they did. They're like, okay, we can't get money to support what we're doing because there's no it's, there's political support for it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to sell weapons to Iran that money we're going to use to fund uh, these these rebels to stop Marxism. And the way they would bring the weapons down there, because they had to keep it hush-hush, is they would pay these like private, these people that own planes or whatever, they'd pay them to fly weapons down to give to these rebels. But here's the thing. These guys that they were paying, they were, they were making money hand over fist because on the way back, they're like, well, I'm already coming back. I might yeah. as well fly some cocaine over to America. Right. And this is what caused the cocaine explosion it in was the eighties. The hush hush. And the CIA literally turned a blind eye because yeah. they were they were at least we're going to stop communism. So cocaine was just flo <laughs> there's flooding a, the country. There's that's a, true. There's a famous guy yeah. out of Miami. There was a documentary done on him that had the speedboats that he used to sell. He used to sell like the million dollar speedboats, and it would it would come with a bunch of cocaine. Dude, yeah. you guys seen that? Have you seen that documentary? No. Oh, I have to look it up to see what it was. No, but this is legit. It's what they did. That's so good. to think the CIA would create Bitcoin so they could see what's going on and fuck with people, it's not out of the realm of possibility yeah i don't know definitely i don't know if i subscribe to well that. think about it if, if bitcoin was really a threat to the to currencies I, they would have easily been like it's illegal to use bitcoin it's illegal to have it. it's illegal to trade it and they would have shut that shit down so quickly mm. i mean don't you feel like they are trying to they're, no, they're they've not. been trying to resist it for a hot minute nah, they're definitely not watching really. it I mean, thank you. Yeah, they're definitely watching. They're resisting it. it like the like the MLB resists steroids. It's like, oh yeah, we don't really want it. Wink, <laughs> wink. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, now you're starting to see. All, I've seen a bunch of brands now accepting it. Of course, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's what I mean. Because they could have said it's illegal. No one can use it. You can't trade it. No apps can serve it. Apple, you can't have apps that do it. Whatever. And then it would be pure black market. But they kind of legitimize it. They let it happen here and there. CIA. Yeah, yeah, I'm I telling you. Hey. I don't know. I'm <laughs> telling you. I don't know, bro. Yeah. I we'll like it. That's, yeah. that's a good theory. Isn't that a good theory? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, that's good stuff. Hey, speaking of good, did you guys like the uh, orange slices that Jerry made? Oh, oh yeah. How fire was so, those? So, Doug, put the... Okay, here's... Okay, he put it up here. So, sh this is what she did. Something I would have never thought of. The recipe's on Instagram. It's I think it's on our, our Mind Pump Oh, it's on Instagram? Instagram? Yeah. So, she... No, it's not on our Mind Pump Instagram, Doug? I think so. Yeah. So, what? chocolate... Mm -hmm. Coconut oil melted, one packet of immunity sea salt, dipped oranges in it. Incredible. Yeah. And the immunity, of course, it's got where, stuff. Where do you, where do you think you see it on our, our mind pump? Where do you think you see yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, here's the thing. This is going up on Thursday. I think they plan on putting it up. So. Ah, they're going to post mm -hmm. it. Okay. There we're in go. the future. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> got you. We're in the future. I was like, no, Doug. No, it is not on there. <laughs> hey, hey, you know it's what now. You know what movie I watched? I was so disappointed. What? And you, I should have listened to you. You told me it sucked. <laughs> Wonder Woman, 84. Oh, uh, yeah. God. Was it good? Damn, no. It was a letdown, oh. dude. It was yeah, a terrible story. Yeah. Terrible really? story. Oh, good. I'm glad. Sometimes we disagree on stuff like this. The plot was stupid. It, it was, was dumb, right? Oh, well, that sucks. Dude, I love a 
Gal Gadot, or whatever it, it, her name is. Yeah, she's a bad at it. Yeah. So, I, yeah, be careful what you say too much because Jessica gets like, oh, I know why you want to watch Wonder Woman. <laughs> I'm like, no, I like Superman. Whatever, dude. They got Thor and all that stuff, dude. Give me a break. Yeah, so, so, so here's the two things I hate in movies. When they do this in movies, I just, I want to pull my hair out. One is when they end a movie where it was just a dream. So, it's a shitty, like, easy plot, right? Where crazy stuff happens and at the end they wake up and you're like, oh, it was all a dream. Yeah. yeah this movie sucked. And then here's the other one. Whenever somebody, this is such a cop out, easy way to to make weird shit happen. Somebody finds something that's magical and gives them wishes. That's literally the bad guy. The bad guy finds a stone yeah. and it gives them wishes. So Wonder Woman has to fight him. Oh my god! What? Yeah, yeah. worse than okay. like a cartoon. I'm glad you hated it just as much because I thought it was super unoriginal. Oh. To me. I feel I feel like the first one got so much, and this is what they do, man. Yeah. This is what I, I why movies suck now, dude. Is they they get these movies that go crazy and then they just make part two one. part three and they all suck yeah. yeah it's just they they it's the same same story arc which is bullshit well, story. Ju justice league is coming out if uh. it's not out right now so i think justice league the new one's coming out and superman's in it he's got the black suit on so do you guys see what so have you guys been watching some of these previews to like movies that they say are either they're in theater or they go in theater or on hbo max yeah. or amazon prime yeah. so it looks like movies that would eventually go into the movie theater and how they're promoting them, there's going to be options going forward. Yeah. And I don't know if this is just for this this time being that we're in this this weird period of we can't go to the movies, or this is the future we're going to see. People are going to have the option, do you want to go see it in theaters, or you can download it on HBO yeah, Max mm -hmm. or uh, Prime. I, Yeah, I think they're going to be releasing them both at the same time. That's I've never seen that with HBO Max. kill movies. Yeah. yeah. That is going to kill movies. It'll kill the movie the, as we know it. I think they're still going to make a killing. Movie theaters? Oh, no. Theaters are done. Oh, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, the movies are going to kill yeah. us. No, the only theaters that are going to survive, and, it, and it's not going to be all of them because there will be just too many of them to meet this this demand. The demand's not going to be that big, but would be a theater where it's an experience. Yeah. So, like, you go there, they give you alcohol, food, you know, and it's a movie. It would be like when we used to watch uh, Big Lebowski. Like, it was literally, like, it's an old movie. Oh, like, yeah. everybody loves it. And we would go there, and it was just like you'd get white Russians, and you talk shit the whole time and throw yeah. popcorn at yeah. the screen. That's actually a really and good And it was point. really fun. If you could do cool stuff like that, that would be, that's very smart, actually. Theaters, yeah. theaters, did someone do that, actually? Yeah, or, they did that downtown Santa Cruz yeah. at the Where white Russians were being served? Yeah. yeah. No shit. There's yeah. Theaters that's that are, brilliant. Though, yeah. So there's theaters that are Rocky doing Horror that. Horror Picture Show, everybody dressed up, all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, there was a theater in San Jose that was doing uh, like all the godfathers and so you know it's going to be a bunch of godfather fans they're going to quote the movie as it's going on yeah well, i can the, see that uh, the other thing that thing. movie theaters did for, as a pivot that i think is smart and could keep them around is like paying for ufc fights so yes. You, yeah. So you know these UFC fights, and now are getting like what hundred something dollars on yeah, some so of them. So you just pay ten dollar ticket. Yeah, ten dollar ticket and go watch it with you know fifty or however many. Now people I wonder else. what they're charging the theater That'd to broadcast fun. it. Oh yeah, I mean they're getting charged obviously a premium a to be able to because the same thing goes like if you were at a bar and you used to do the same thing too. I forget what you had to pay. I know. I remember when I had my 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 studio, I would put like UFC fights on and stuff like that, and I remember somebody was like, "Hey, you know, if I report this, you're gonna charge you way more." I'm like. Fuck out of my gym. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I have that kind of power. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you know that? Wow. <laughs> you're an <laughs> asshole. Yeah. You're, you're that guy. Yeah. Get out of my face. Speaking of movies, uh, you know, every time I forget to wear blue light blocking glasses at night. Oh, dude. Huge difference. I am so. Huge difference. I brought this up the last time we had a Felix Gray commercial about the, the my TV. And uh, I misplaced them again, and I was down there, and I'm like, it's so it's so funny because I've talked about it on the show. It's happened to me a couple times now. If I watch that TV without wearing those, I get headaches for sure, yeah. or just it's so hard for me to fall asleep from that. Here's another use for the Felix Gray glasses. Keep them next to your bed if you wake up to go to the bathroom because one of the one of the worst things is when okay. you wake up to the bathroom, you got to turn on a light or whatever, and then it, it disrupts your sleep. Are you a, are you a turn on the light bathroom guy at night? Uh, I, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a feel, I feel my way. Around. Yeah, I'm a feel my way. Yeah, well, you sit on the toilet too. You yeah, yeah, you don't stand. Oh, you you stand and pee in, in the middle <laughs> yeah, of the night. That's yeah, of course. Right. I do. Oh my, I, you do too. Uh, oh yeah, bro. I what the? Your wife must out. fucking hate you. No, no, no. Get no. out of here. Don't yeah. act like you guys. Listen, have... I don't sleep in a skirt. So yeah. Stop, <laughs> dude, <laughs> stop your nonsense, dude. I'm gonna talk to both your wives. I guarantee there's pee all over the fucking floor and all over the seat, man. Listen to me. I'm very precision. 
precision. I use you know, exactly. I use sonar. Yeah, it's so, like a laser. You can tell. Like you can beam. tell where the piece. Guarantee, is I get a sound. text message from Jessica <laughs> and Courtney after this. After this episode, for sure. You yeah, guys are uh, not not missing the freaking edges, dude. Uh, <laughs> get out of here. Uh, Especially at like three in the morning when your dick's all smashed against your leg and shit. It's not, like, <laughs> it's not shooting. It ain't shooting straight at three o'clock in the morning. Hold on a second. Come on. You don't know where you gotta rip it off your leg. It doesn't matter if it's stuck here or there. Whatever. You know where it is. You know where the end is. You just gotta aim in the right direction. Yeah, no, and then you listen. Oh, oh, yeah. That's water. Yeah. That's water. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Oh, that's the floor. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. Yep. Splash. The only problem is when you get the split stream, then you're fucked. That's what I'm saying, yeah. dude. Uh, Come and you're on. like, wait a minute, that's uh, water. That, yeah, yeah. That's rude. Yeah. 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 If you're if you're if you're trying to pee with that. You're like, that's water and floor. So yeah. bitch, it's a split yeah. stream. It's not gonna work. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. dude. God, you guys are ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, I wanted to ask you guys about uh rep ranges. I find this with myself, and it, I'm sure it has something to do with. I'm sure there's a genetic reason for this, but of course, every time I switch to a new rep range for myself, or when I do this with clients, just the switch always causes the body to progress again. Right, it's that novelty. But I also find that there's a rep range that, and I found this with clients, and I find this with myself. All things being equal, the the low rep range for me, if I transition to that, it just kicks it. it no matter what, it blows the doors off of the moderate and the high reps for me. Every single time. I think that's a genetic component. I, I, I would agree. Yeah, because it's not it's not that way for me. I, I feel that way whenever I go back to like 10 to 12 reps. You feel bad? That one, all things being equal, is the best. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, I definitely agree. Like, I mean, some of my best gains came from when I started training in the low rep range. So I, I do, but I consistently feel like, and here's the thing too. Uh, there's, I think there's, it's, uh, it's you know, multi-pronged here because it also, when I lift heavy, the most joint pains, muscle tightness stuff starts to yeah, I yeah, battle yeah, yeah, that yeah. the most, which always ends up kind of hindering my workouts. Where in the ten to twelve rep range, I never feel that. Sure, yeah. I never get, I never get the it's super inflamed joints. I never feel so tight that my yeah. hips hurt, my it is bothering yeah. me. So that's why I also think but when to, I go that ten twelve rep it's range, if I switch to a new rep range, I mean I'll still make gains off the ten to 12, 15 to twenty, all that stuff. But whenever I switch to the low rep range, it's like. Boom. Yeah, I get, I, crazy. I, get, I get some of that. I also get it though when I'm when I'm working on just like real power fast twitch movements. Oh, like yeah. it just, yeah, that's another one of those things my muscles respond to because it is like I put so much work in that direction uh, through all the years of sports and everything. So it's like my body just like, oh yeah, I remember this, and it just gets right back. So in now mode. the thing I would challenge all three of us then is this because I just I alluded to like the hypertrophy phase. You ex uh, alluded to explosive. You alluded to strength. My question is, what are you measuring? Like, so what I'm thinking of when I say I see the greatest change, change in my body and my physique, right. my strength, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Whenever I go, obviously I get the most strength when I go down in the three to five, five no, rep I'm talking, I gain size. Yes, me yeah. too. Oh yeah. Yeah. See. I build like if yeah. I, once I switch to low rep, I build faster in that rep range than any other rep range. It yeah. just, it just piles on my body and I feel like, but you're right. I mean. Like any rep range, you got to move out of it in the low run, the low ones, they just, they just stress the joints yeah. more than all the other yeah, ones. Yeah. Yeah. First question is from Ryan Estep. What are some signals you can hone in on to know when you could benefit from calorie increase or decrease? Been around maintenance for a while and recently seen some slight puffiness. Have I adapted to that amount and need to slowly increase or is it a good time to go down? Yeah, well, first of all, um, the, com the, the comment slight puffiness, that can mean a lot of different things. It could be water retention, lack of sleep can cause... Uh, puffiness also. Also, when people say I'm at maintenance for a long time, are you really at maintenance or are you winging it and feeling like you're at maintenance? Because uh, when people are not literally counting and measuring and weighing, they're almost always off. Right. So that's, you know, number one. Now, as far as signals uh, that can tell you when you can increase or decrease, here's what I tend to pay attention to for myself. And I would also, I used to coach my clients this way. When it was time to decrease, Let's say you're in a bulk, you're eating more calories and you're burning. When it becomes a chore to eat, when you find your appetite start to decrease and it's like, oh, I can't eat this much anymore, probably time to, to start to decrease calories. Uh, on the flip side, when your calories are low and your appetite's high and it's high and it continues to go higher, higher, and then you start to notice that your strength gains start to really drop in the gym, performance starts to drop, maybe it's time to bump them. Here's a good rule of thumb. I would say, regardless of what your goals are, at least every two or three weeks, throw in a day or two that's different, no matter what. You can go back to what you were doing before. And studies actually show this, by the way. There's a, there's a great study that was done not that long ago where they compared people who were on a 
consistent calorie uh, deficit versus people who were on a calorie deficit and then would throw in some higher calorie days. And the people who threw in the higher calorie days burned more body fat and and kept more muscle. So it's, it's a better strategy to do it that way. I feel like whenever the results, either direction, uh, slow up. For example, like when I'm, when I'm bulking and weight's coming on the scale, even if I'm feeling a little puffy... If I feel like the gains I'm built, I like the way I'm looking week over week over week, I'm going to keep going. If I feel like I don't feel like I'm liking the way I'm looking anymore, strength is starting to plateau, I'm in this surplus, that's when I'll start to come back the the other direction. Mm-hmm. And the same thing is true when I'm in a cut. If I'm in a cut and week over week, I'm, I'm seeing improvement in my physique and I like the way it's looking, I'm going to keep riding it. The minute that I start to see that slow down and I'm not noticing major progress week over week, I go the opposite direction. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, and I think that it's that's that number is going to look different for every person. And for me, that's what I've found works the best. Yeah. You know, it's, what's hard about this is it's hard to remain objective because most people right. lean to either it's this is pretty general, but generally speaking, I could put people into two categories. People who are more focused on gaining size and strength, and that's their that's what they think about mostly. And then people who just want to be lean or lose weight, and that's what they think about mostly. Here's why it's difficult to remain objective. If you're somebody that's always struggled with weight and you're been in this deficit for a long time, you may ignore the signals because you're afraid. You're afraid to increase your calories. I don't mm-hmm. want to gain a single pound. Right. Now, or, or people on the other side. I mm-hmm. was one of those people. Right? I always wanted to gain weight. I always right. wanted to put on size. You don't want to lose any weight. Yeah, so I didn't care about these signals. It's like I don't want to lose a single pound uh, on the scale. So it's really hard to stay objective, which is why until you become super self-aware, you've been doing this for a long time, and you've got some of those insecurities out of the way, I would say uh, every two or three weeks, no matter what, just, just put it in your schedule and do it no matter what because – Whenever you ask somebody to be objective, hey, do you think you should start to cut calories? You tell that to the skinny kid. Like, no, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep them high. I think I think the signs are still good, even though they're maybe not. Yeah. Next question is from Malibu Banks. What causes some people to lose weight when reverse dieting after hitting a plateau? Mm. I love this because you know I sometimes I'll get pushback from some of the stuff that we say on the podcast when we'll say things like. You know, uh, lifting weights boosts your metabolism, or reverse dieting plus lifting weights is a great way to boost the metabolism. Well, this question is an example of how we haven't quite figured this all the way out. We have this, this phenomenon happens always and, and a lot. And, and we'll get they'll, they'll send studies and be like, look, this study showed that gaining muscle only really increased the metabolism by 20 calories or whatever. And it's, this is all bullshit. Okay. So uh, we've witnessed this many times with many, many of the clients that we've worked with, with ourselves. It's a real phenomenon. And when you increase or decrease calories, yes, your body can pare muscle down. It could store body fat to to store extra calories. But it can also become more or less efficient with calories, okay? And we don't quite know how this works, but the body can literally take 10 calories and become more efficient with it or become less efficient with it. And the less efficient may look like some of those calories are just turned into heat. They're just turned into extra heat in the body or extra energy or whatever. So this phenomenon is hard to explain, but it for sure happens. I've seen this with my own eyes. I've seen people who've been on a calorie deficit for so long. Their metabolism is, is really adapted to, to few calories. They're overtraining like crazy. I'll reduce their exercise so they're burning less calories, and I'll bump their calories, and then they get leaner, yeah. lo and behold. Mm-hmm. Now, it could be... They built some muscle, which then burnt more calories. But I don't think that fully explains it. I think there's other stuff that's going on. And I've seen it, again, with my own eyes. Yeah, no, this is one of those ones that I don't know how to even explain it to somebody. I just know that it works. I know that this is what we're looking for. Like That's when I know things are going really well is when I can add calories to somebody's diet and they actually lose weight. And it does. It breaks all the rules that we're aware of and mm-hmm. that we've been told forever. But this is the benefit of, of weight. Tra- and this, this only happens, by the way, when you have somebody who is weight training in conjunction with what their what their diet is. I'd never see this with somebody who's doing cardio. Mm-hmm. If you're doing cardio only and you're also trying to reverse diet, I don't see the same thing happening. But somebody who is lifting weights, and a lot of times my simple theory of explaining is that your body needed those calories. It mm-hmm. wanted that. We were running lower without it, and your body was waiting for us to give it those calories, and now it's running more efficiently. I mean, I feel like it's when you tune up your car. Like it, You can get a car that's got the same engine, same everything, 
everything, but by tuning it up, all of a sudden it gets faster. You well, know? well, look at you look at some of the the studies, observational studies on like POWs, like prisoners of war who've been kept uh, in in you know they've been kept captive for years and years mm. and years, and fed very very little. And yes, they come out lost, lots of muscle, very emaciated, but still. They are surviving off an, an amount of calories that usually doesn't make any sense. Like yeah. how, like it doesn't make any sense that a grown man, even if he lost muscle, did all stuff, is surviving off of you know, four hundred calories a day. How is this possible? The body can really become efficient or mm -hmm. not efficient with calories. It's got a remarkable ability to do this. Yeah, it's interesting. I know this is probably a ter terrible example, but um, when I was going through carnivore diet, I was uh, anticipating like because I was eating such big volumes of meat that you know that was going to produce like a, a lot more waste. And it was actually the opposite. Uh, you know, the the waste of the poops were a lot smaller than you know previous to that. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it, you know it, it was utilizing you know. More more of, of the nutrients, uh, you know, or not. I think, I, yeah, so you're like the, the leader of North Korea. He doesn't poop because <laughs> he works so hard. He absorbs all Just the little food. pellets. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. I think that might have to do more with the fiber uh, in, in vegetables and stuff like that. But it, it, I mean, I'm telling you, there are certain things. I think we'll be able to explain this uh, at some point. But until now, you can show me all the studies you want that show that, oh, you know, building muscle doesn't really speed up the metabolism that much or whatever. I have taken women who were eating... 1,100 calories a day, doing cardio every single day, doing all kinds of stuff, and I've gotten them to get their calories up to 2,200 calories a day, not doing almost any cardio except for maybe some walks, and lifting it, weights and twice it a week. it doesn't line up with any of what the studies say. It doesn't line up with any of it, but legit, and they're leaner, and they've got muscle, yeah. and, the, and, the, and it's not like they gained 30 pounds of muscle to make up the difference. We're talking about, you know, eight pounds of muscle on somebody. This is a woman we're talking about. I've seen this happen many, many times, so... Uh, it's a for sure real thing. And again, you you see people who lift weights consistently, do it properly consistently. Look how much they can eat with the little amount of activity they do compared to somebody who is doing tons and tons of activity, constantly reducing their calories. Look at the difference. Next question is from More Life Jojo. It recently seems that a common message in the online fitness space is that we aren't meant to be lean all year long and that wanting to maintain a lean body is bad for our health. What are your thoughts on this type of message? I think this is a message that we've been saying for almost six years now, and yeah. it's finally getting out to the rest of the yeah. space. Yeah, and, and it depends what you mean by lean. So uh, do I think a man uh, who's, let's say, 13%, 14% body fat can is going to maintain that all year long and be healthy? Absolutely. Even 10. Yeah. 10 is harder. Some people can maintain. Depends for, on who you're talking yeah. about. But ten, even 10 to 14, I think, is very realistic. Yeah, so I would people. say that's a good range, right? Yeah. And it depends on the person. But, uh, you know, why is it? Why is it unhealthy to maintain very lean all the time? If you've ever gotten down to single-digit body fat as a man or if you've ever gotten down to, let's say, below 17% as a woman, it, it, your lifestyle is very much dedicated to maintaining that leanness. It's not a healthy lifestyle and mentally or psychologically. It just isn't. You're constantly looking at things. You can't, you can't overeat this. You can't do that. You're thinking about food. I got to make sure I get this many grams of protein. My carbs can't be over this or my fat can't be over that. I have to work out like this all the time. It's just not a healthy, it's a very obsessive way of living that's just not healthy mm -hmm. for most people. And then, especially for women, body fat is essential for health. And women who maintain you know, these, these low teen body fat percentages all the time, they're, they're, you, rarely do they have a period. The hormones tend to be off. Many of them try to control the symptoms with hormone therapy. Um, so no, it's 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 a now it, when you go on Instagram, you look at the pictures. You know, it looks cool, right? Mm -hmm. the, the shredded muscles, whatever. But it's not. That's not something to strive for all the time. I think doing it every once in a while, especially if you have a healthy mind, you want to see what it takes. Absolutely fine. Maintaining that probably not healthy. Well, I think that the, you re refer to Instagram. I think that. 80% of those bodies that you see on Instagram is bullshit. Yeah. If they're not being photoshopped, then they are they were shot at a period of time, and then Instagram people drip that mm -hmm. over over the course of a year. So a lot of it's a facade. A lot of them pretend mm -hmm. that they look that, that way, and they don't really look that way. And then the ones that do, the ones that walk around at 6 to 7% body fat year-round, you don't know the rest of their life. How many people are suffering? I mean, I know, I know how much Katrina suffered for me, for me to compete. I saw that. And I, I remember that was a constant conversation with her that I'm not going to make you do this forever. I promise. I promise. Like, we're, there's a goal in mind. We're going to reach that goal. And then I'm done with mm -hmm. this lifestyle. As cool as looking that ripped was, and as cool as competing was, 
I, I would never put that on my partner ever yeah. again. And I've been in a relationship where I had somebody who was competing and I was the other person. Like, it sucks. You know, you know how lame it is that we have to like map out everything that we're doing all day long to make sure that he or she gets their meals all day just timed right, or we can't go to this restaurant because they don't offer an option for this, or oh, I can't have popcorn at the movie theater, or oh, I can't bring this home because then that makes her want to have it too. Like, just that that lifestyle. There's a lot to that, and that's why too you see a lot of these fitness fanatics, they end up marrying or dating another fanatic so they can be neurotic. They have to. They can, yes, they can be yeah. neurotic together, not realizing how much of life that they're really missing yeah, out on. It's just on. another form of uh, an extreme, you know, and and that's just the thing. When you want to live in the extreme, it, you're going to have to make compromises and, uh, you know, other other parts and other facets of, of your lifestyle are going to get affected. And so it's like, if that's what you really want and you desire uh, constantly, you know, you're going to be battling some things along the way. And that's the thing is it's, you know, in terms of like being super shredded and lean all the time, like it's, it, your body's going to be fighting you that whole time. It is. And your hormones suffer. Men's testosterone levels will drop. Women's estrogen, progesterone levels kind of go out of whack. I'll tell you what, like, here's the truth in the real life. If you're a, if you're a man and you're a strong 13%, 14% body fat, uh, most women will consider you physically attractive. If you're a woman and you're a strong, you know, 20 to, you know, 24% body fat, but you, you're strong, you obviously lift weights because the muscle gives you shape. You look attractive, uh, physically attractive. You look good. You look healthy. Isn't that ironic, though, that, that, funny? that we chase these ridiculous like things, but the opposite sex that we're trying to attract or the same sex possibly are not even attracted to that. Right. It's yeah. almost like it's we're competing with our peers. That's totally. the only people that we're really trying to impress. Like If you're a ripped-ass dude, you know who thinks it's really cool? Other the other, the other dudes. dudes. <laughs> the other dudes that are yeah. trying to get ripped. Yeah. Like you like you said, there's... I mean, they've done, they've done plenty of research around yeah. this. Most people want somebody in that kind of body fat range because you look normal and healthy and you look fun to be with. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You look like a you good look time. Balanced. And yeah. I, I remember going to... Uh, a, the first time I ever went to a, a show, I had my... my at the time, my business partner was competing in bodybuilding. And so, you know, when they did the show, they also have, you know, bikini and figure and, you know, physique and all that stuff. And I remember seeing the girls that were competing in the bikini. And, you know, when I would go backstage because I was helping them out. So I was allowed backstage. And I'd see these girls getting prepared and their faces. Yeah. They looked dead. Just they were sunken in eyes. Gaunt and, and, oh, and acne, obviously, yeah. because the hormones were all off. And, and, you know, and this is supposed to be like the best way that they look. And it's like if I saw if if I saw that person in real life, I would think, you know, uh, you know, I, I would maybe think, wow, if this person gained 15 pounds, they would look really well, good. Well, that's right the now. thing, too. It's like it, it's not just the abs. Everybody wants these like ridiculously popping shredded abs. Like you have to lose body fat all over your body. Yep. And so, you know, you get that. You'll get the the bony sticking out, you know, points that you that are unfavorable just to, to maintain this lean ab look. Now, that to be, you know, it's also important to note that what isn't healthy either is to get lean every once in a while and then blow away up and yeah, then come back down. Too extreme, yeah. right? So I, I don't, I don't want us, to, or I don't want to come off like we are advocating for people to be, you know, oh, okay, well the guys say I shouldn't be lean that often, so I'm going to blow up, and that's what we see a lot. You see one extreme or the other. You either no, see no. the neurotic person who tries to stay six percent year round, or you see the average person who yo-yos hard. They yeah. swing high up, they could put on a bunch of weight, and then they push. And really nothing hard wrong going for a goal of trying to make that happen. And you know, and like get to a peak, like yeah. like like you're peaking, just like anything else with sports. Even for me, it was like we went through an off season that led into an, an extreme, you know, competition at the end of that uh, that I was preparing for. But then I, you know, came right back into like a normalized type of a training situation. Next question is from Gretz one two three. Is there an ideal ratio of strength you should have between your bench, deadlifts, and squats? I can bench my body weight, but I can't do that much more in deadlifts or squats. Okay, so normally what you'll find is that you can bench a certain amount of weight, you could squat more than that, and you could deadlift more than that. So typically what it looks like is your 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 bench is the lowest, then it goes squat, then it goes deadlift. Is that true? Yeah, for I most thought, people. I thought it's interchangeable with the squat and the deadlift. No, some people, um, are, are, and this is not most, some people can squat more than they can deadlift. 
but it's much more common that someone can deadlift yeah. okay. more well, than they squat. That was definitely me for a while. I mean, that's just because I didn't deadlift. Right, right. You know, right. I didn't have the skill of it yet. Right, right. And, 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 every, and every once in a while, you see someone who can bench a ton, and you can see the way that they're built. is big rib cage, short arms, and, yeah. you know, kind of like the, right. the power lifter, like the guys who could bench like crazy, but yeah, they yeah, deadlift yeah. and squat. Right, right. Okay, so here's a good number for a guy. This is a good, I guess, strength goal that's probably attainable for most men if they train consistently. Being able to bench uh, your own uh, body weight, uh, being able to squat about one and a quarter your body weight, and then being able to deadlift about one and a half times your body weight. That's a good goal that I think most men, if they train consistently, uh, could be able to accomplish. Now, if you want to be like, you know, I want to be super strong, well, you know, if you bench like one and a half times your body weight, squat, you know, two times your body weight, deadlift two and a half times your body weight, now you're starting to get pretty damn, pretty damn uh, strong. For a woman... This is a little bit more difficult for me to, to figure out. Um, I'm trying to think what would be a good number. You're probably looking at something like half body weight uh, to maybe you know three-quarter bit body weight bench, squat, probably body weight, uh, and deadlift, probably body weight in a quarter or something like that. I, what, I remember um, T Nation had yeah, a really I was good- just thinking of that. Yeah, T Nation had a really good article that was like- They had a whole chart. They did. They had a whole chart of this, and maybe we can, we can look it up and then hopefully attach it to the show notes. It was, it, and it had both men and women. It and showed it, you like, like elite. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It said, good. yeah. It said like bad, good, very good, or whatever. There's like yeah. three or four categories of what what Sal's referring to for both men and women, like where they should be on this. I thought that was a pretty good, accurate chart to whatever it is. For as a trainer, the, I would say I'm a, a, where you're at, Sal. Is if I if I had a woman that could do almost her her weight in bench, that's phenomenal. Yeah. And as long as she was squatting and deadlifting her weight and above, we're doing pretty damn. You are. Yeah, we're doing pretty damn good. So, uh, oh, there is that it. So this is okay. So male. Okay, here's what they have for. Uh, see, they didn't. They don't do this by body weight. Oh well, actually, they did. So for they said for a man, decent for a squat is 315 pounds or one and a half times your body weight. Good was 405 pounds or two times your body weight, and great was. What is that? 465 or two and a half times body weight for a squat. For female, it was 95 or 75%, uh, 0.75 of your body weight. Good. 155 or one and a quarter of your body weight. Great was, what is that? 205 or two times your body weight. But, you know, they're talking to a like a like fitness fanatic audience because those numbers are pretty high. Those like, are, yeah, yeah, that's why I, I Even would, just decent is high on there, I would say. I mean, when you're talking about, okay, the clients that we train, which were average, average person, average person yeah. I wanted, the way I looked at it was rarely ever in their life are they going to have to pick something off the ground that's heavier than them, right? right? Mm -hmm. Or squat something down that's heavier than they are. So as long as they could do their body weight and squatting and deadlifting, I was really happy yeah. with the progress or where we are currently at. Of course, we are, trying for more, but I would be very impressed or happy with a client that was doing that. And then as bench pressing, if if I had a guy, if he was be able to at least do his body weight, and for a girl, if she was able to do 50% of her body weight to totally. 75, I would yeah. be very happy. Yeah, totally. It, it is. You know, what's interesting too is that you typically will be good at, like really good at one in comparison to the other. Totally. Your, your uh -huh. body type tends to, like if you've got long arms and you're kind of yeah, tall. It's all your levers that you have. Yeah, you're probably a deadlifter, right? Yeah. You're probably going to be able to, if you had you know, short arms, kind of stocky, mm -hmm. bench press is probably going to be you know uh, what you're better at better at um i know for me my squat and my bench was you know good uh my deadlift uh, was always great uh and they don't match my deadlift was always you know through the roof in comparison to the other two so that's the other thing but here look here here's the thing at the end of the day this is a comp this is a question that's essentially saying uh, how do I compare myself to other people? Yeah. That's a trap. It right. Is. Just be honest with you. That's such a good point, really. Yeah. And that's another thing, too. Like, if I had a client, it was about where we started and totally. where we're at yeah. now. So even though we're all throwing out these random-ass percentages and numbers, you know, if you have been strength training for, you know, months or years and you're better at all those things than what you were before – you're in the right. You're heading down the right. This is a long. This is a long uh, journey, man. Hundred percent. I threw away all these standards and these like performance, uh, you know, metrics as far as like, oh, here's what somebody your age and your body weight, yeah. and all that, because it just it just attracts you from you know like making progress for you individually. Well, especially the numbers that we just looked at. I, uh, Sal, you're right. That that's definitely geared toward the fitness community because if you show that to a person who doesn't lift, they are so <laughs> they're not even close. They're gonna to, get deflated. Yeah, instantly. they're not gonna get close to e any of those. At no. all, they're going to be way. And it off. says decent. Oh, I'm not decent because I can't squat. I know. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, telling that to your client. What's the quote? Um, comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Right. So, 
one of the biggest traps in and just in life, but especially in fitness, is comparing yourself uh, to other people. First off, it's a it's not fair. It is not a fair comparison. Everybody is so different, so individual, uh, different genetics, different diet, different lifestyle, different time that they can spend working out. Their limb, you know, length is different. Their their muscles are very different. Their central nervous system reacts very different. Age different, hormone differences. It's so unfair to compare yourself to someone else. If you want to compare yourself, which there's nothing wrong with comparison, but if you're going to do this, you know, you've heard apples to apples, right? It'd be like me comparing my you know, my 4x4 truck to a, a Ferrari for, for 0 to 60 and being sad that my 4x4 truck is not as fast as the Ferrari. It's not a fair comparison. If you want to compare, which is fine, at least make it a fair comparison. There's only one fair comparison in fitness. It's you to you yesterday. That's it. Mm-hmm. There is no other. There's nobody else. Not even your twin because they don't even live exactly identical to you. The only fair comparison is you to yourself. So questions like this, yeah, I know we gave out some numbers. Those are super general, yeah. but to be this honest with you, arbitrary. Ar- it, it been, it's been all over. Like I had clients who, I had a woman that I trained who she was hypermobile and very lax and she had beat cancer and you know her squatting the bar was a greater accomplishment than the you know 22 year old you know ex football player who I got to squat 405 like oh, that's great but getting her to squat a bar from right. where she came from right. oh my god and but it's still it's not comp- it's not fair you yeah. compare yourself to yourself don't compare it to anyone else because you will uh, crush your take your joy right out of your life uh, look mind pump is recorded on video as well as audio come find us on youtube Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media, uh, Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and me. I'm Shadow Band, but if you type in Mind Pump Sal, I promise you I'm there. Now, is that you know a valid question for a potential client to ask? You know, the trainer, like how many 100%. people are you servicing? One hundred percent. I think it should be how many clients do you work with? How closely do you work with your clients? Like, right. If you're a client and you're asking a potential trainer, like think of all the scenarios where you've been disappointed before. By the way, if you're a coach, think about on your come up, 